Welcome back to SOS. I'm Stuff Sound Badass. Sippy Cup. Today we're going to continue the inch bag. Pinnacle. And hygiene. Got to stay clean, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to pan over here and we're going to talk about some stuff. Now, Sippy and I both have done a video before in the past. I think it was uh, Medical Minute Man. Was that what we were talking about before? Where we talked about IFAX and things like that. We introduced our IFAX. Now, in the event that we do leave, we have plate carrier vests that have IFAX on each one of those. So uh, she has hers, and it's the exact same kit as mine. So we have our own individual first aid kit, which we could use to treat other people. But this is a more of a standby, also in the event that I do forget my IFAX. So we're going to cover some items that would go in your inch, ba inch bag for emergencies and long term. Okay, I'll stop talking. I'm panning over. All right, first off, I'm going to get hygiene out of the way so we can move on to the medical stuff. Now, this little kit was put together. A friend of mine sent me a little kit of stuff, okay, and I only upgraded. I upgraded from the soap, the bar soap that was in this little kit and the lotion. The lotion was just too much. The lotion that they threw in there was just kind of a little bit bulky. So, lotion in the event, you know, I start getting cracks in my hands or whatever. There we go. We got that. There's also the, the soap, the shampoo. There's, there's a couple other items in here. There's deodorant in here, which will work. Tissues. There's your soap. Your, there's your toothpaste and that's a decent sized tube right there you don't need anything too big and a small toothbrush and that could be a backup for somebody else there's uh, the fresh naps moisturizing towels and there's a comb I don't need a comb but somebody else might need a comb this isn't just for me this is also for somebody else also in the event of total chaos what if you have to trade somebody for something right you might run into a bunch of dudes out in the woods like Bubba and Billy and, you know, they might have something else you need and you might need that so you can trade a comb. What were you saying you could use a toothbrush for? Well, it's a good backup if you need to scrub out a wound. But that's some of that. I'm going to get this out of the way. Or they might want it for their wives, their girlfriends, you know. Women probably like to trade. Now, something I wanted to throw in with that was some more general hygiene was something like this. You know, you got your baby shampoo, right? In the event, I might need baby shampoo. Not for me, you know what I mean, right? A little bit of toothpaste and some and a toothbrush, a spare, right? Compressed towels, they're amazing. You get them wet, they expand, they get huge, right? You always gotta have some of these things. Now, instead of doing just regular baby wipes, like you got these baby wipes, now baby wipes are for a reason, right? Babies, mm -hmm. what if I run into somebody else's baby? Yeah. Here, have a baby wipe, right? So, now you could just throw baby wipes in there and clean yourself up, but get the real deal. These are antibacterial. It basically kills 99.99% of germs, see it says right there. I'm taking their word for it, right? Wet ones. It's like two bucks, I think. Mm -hmm. Buck fifty or something like that. But see, now you've got this and this. Now, is this stuff important? Should I be concerned with weight? Not really. Not when it comes to hand wipes and things like that. Because what's the chances? You know, you might it might be slim that you're finding a fresh water source and all sorts of stuff. You're going to need stuff like that, right? It's important. Mm -hmm. Now, Germex. All right. Germex can be used for two different things. This hand sanitizer can be used to kill germs on your hands until you get to a water source, or you could also use it to start a fire. Yes, it's not to be confused with as a main um, chemical that will just kill anything. It, it'll only just kill certain germs, while other germs will keep building up on your hands, so it's good to hand wash when you can. 
I'm throwing this in hygiene, and it's not medical, and I have no other place to put it, but I'm not going to put it in miscellaneous. Bug repellent, you got your DEET, and you've got your sunscreen, okay? Both of those right there, super light. It's always good to have that, just in case. All right. Little pack of Pareil. That's just to throw at somebody. All right. Now, when we get into... I don't really need these. This is just kind of an extra. All right. What are we going to go into next? You wouldn't need those for ticks, huh? What's that? Little... No, because you have uh, they're already required in here. Well, I'll get into tools. All right. There you go. So that's pretty much it for hygiene for the most part. This is going to be used for wounds and diaper rash. You could use it for either one. Antibacterial, uh, antibac, uh, uh, Neosporin. Oh, antibiotic cream. You could use this for all sorts of stuff, right? This, this, and this. These three items here. Now, chapstick, right, for your for your lips, but not just even with this. These four items right here. These mixed with cotton balls. You could do this if you want to. Now, I wouldn't recommend these two, right? Leave these separate. Let them be their own entity. You could use like Neosporin and cotton balls, and they still do the same thing as Vaseline. A lot of people don't know that, but you can you, you can substitute Vaseline with Neosporin for your cotton ball fires. So, you could bust out a cotton ball, treat a wound with your cotton ball. I mean, just like a scratch or a cut or whatever, you know, a little a little boo boo, and use it to light your fire afterwards. Just saying. That's kind of why I threw those in there with the cotton balls. I always put super glue in here. A lot of people say, you know, you could super glue a cut. What if I run out of band aids? What if my band aids are wet? You know what I mean? But I've mm -hmm. still got the super glue in my kit. So that would be one more option for that. Let's see. Uh, I'll have you go kind of look at these things. Now these are just, these are your alcohol pads. These come in handy. And these are sutures. They're pill and stick sutures. But I'm throwing them over there. Knuckle bandages. These are always important. Now I've got these separate from regular band-aids. These are band-aids. A huge pack of band-aids. There's not eight in there. There's way more than that. I kind of overstuffed it. If you look in there, it's overstuffed, right? Okay. Band-Aids. These are so important. And the reason why I say that is because what if you, you know, uh, you know, you're building stuff or whatever. You're making a shelter or something and you, you know, cut your, cut your hand open or whatever and it's still bleeding. You know, it's still bleeding. But is it requirement to pull all this stuff out to treat a small injury like that? No, you're gonna you're gonna turn to stuff like this. Now these are your larger ones. These are huge. You can find these at Walmart or wherever. Uh, these are this this one's a little bit bigger. Okay, well a little bit smaller than the bigger ones. And then you got your knuckles right there. It's always good to have these, but these are gonna get used the most because usually it's your fingers. I know I know most people know it's usually your fingers and your hands that are gonna get cut up the most in situations. So there's your band-aids. These are pill and stick sutures. In the event until you can stitch someone up. Or if it's just something light and you want to pull the wound back together. Always good to know. And then you've got your an iodine uh, pad you could use. Or this one's important. And you've got your your iodine brake and wipe. I've got a little cotton packet on the end there, but these are iodine as well. You could probably find these at Walmart, to be honest. I've actually found stuff like this at Walmart. When it comes to like 10% iodine, 8% iodine, you can find that at Walmart easy. And that's the kind of iodine you're going to be using anyway. Sting, <laughs> sting relief pad. I threw one in there. You never know, right? Bees love me. Uh, this is just non-aspirin. Uh, that goes with my non-aspirin, which I only carry non-aspirin because I don't want it to go back and get me sick and I die. Because uh, aspirin will do that. It goes bad. You want to talk about this one? Oh, the little ammo ammonia inhalants. It's just if people start feeling faint or they pass out, you just bust it open. and. Or they go into shock, right? 
That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, they go into shock and they pass out. You could crack one of these and rub it in front of their face and you'll snap too pretty Mm -hmm. fast. We've talked about that on the show before. Or if you need, like, a kind of pick-me-up if you're standing security and you're falling asleep. Oh, man. If you sniff that, you're waking up. Yeah. Uh, Now, pads and stuff like that, we'll, we'll go over that in a minute. We'll go over tools. I throw in a light. This is just a... You can find this all over the place. I think I got this one at, like, AutoZone. But this, I like it because it clips on my Molly gear. And it, I can't remember how much I paid for it. I, I want to say less than less than five bucks for this flashlight here. I, I even think they have them at Walmart. But you can take this and clip it on your Molly gear or wherever your belt. And it's AAA. And it works, right? So I can see what I'm doing at night. Now, I've got this. Let's move that out of the way. Now, you can buy this kit almost anywhere, uh, from like Amazon, eBay, or wherever, but I found this cool little kit. This snaps right on your belt, if you need to wear it on your belt all the time, that's if. But you've got, you've got your EMT shears. These are just standard, right? Mm-hmm. And you've got, this is so you can't cut them when you go, when you go digging underneath their clothes to cut their clothes off, if you need to remove their clothes. And then, I don't want to get too far into this. I can put all this back when I'm done. Stats. These come in handy. They lock in place. Just like that. Great for suturing. Now these are a smaller version of the EMT shears. These have a nice round end there. So you can slide up their body. So it doesn't scratch them or anything. But it's nice and smooth. So you can cut... And then, there's your tweezers. Now, to remove a tick, Sippy was saying, remove a tick with tweezers. You could, and there's another option. It's one more option. A lot of people love these ideas. Do you need to buy a tick remover? You don't need to buy a tick remover. Why? Why? Chapstick. Or, or this stuff here. Or AD ointment. Or Vaseline. You smear it, or neosporin, smear it all over the tick. The tick will back out and fall off. Okay, trust me. He will remove his pinchers. So if you have problems with ticks, that's how you get rid of them. I don't know how many people know that, but that's how that works. Just, you suffocate them. They breathe in, the, they breathe from the sides uh, of their, their, their alien face. There you go. Okay. Modium advanced. Never know if you need that. I like throwing those random things in there because I don't know if I'm going to get an upset stomach or whatever it is. I throw that in there for emergency purposes. What if it's a bad situation? I need that. Mole skin is for your feet. So in case you start getting blisters, you chop off a little piece of it, put it on your mole, uh, your uh, your blister, and it'll let it heal up and stop getting damaged when you're hiking. Okay? Yes, it's all going in there. It's okay. What's this one here? Okay. Back to the tools. Tourniquet. This one's real simple to use. Now, I know I've said before, you don't need to use the tourniquet. You don't have to. You know, this one's real simple. You grab it, pull it, write your time on there. You know, you give your little twist and lock it and do that. It's, there's your lock right there. It comes in and out. Just like that. You twist it real tight and then lock it in place. Boom. Time. Date. Not that anybody needs to know the date. What date did it happen? <laughs> He's dead already. Sometimes it's just more important for for doctors and surgeons to know. When the tourniquet was reply, uh, applied. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you could just use a freaking doggone belt, right? You take this, put it over them, pull tight, as tight as you need. The reason why I say a belt, because of the width. You're not cutting into them. You don't want to cut into them. Then bring it over, you can pinch it in like this, bring it over, back through, and then slide it around, just like that, walk away. Alright. And Sippy's going to demonstrate. Bandana. Bandana. Here you go, my arm. There you go. I'm just, yeah, I'm sure they get the point. They get the point. Bandana. Tied. The reason why? Because of the width. Yep. You don't want it cutting and digging. And if somebody's performing surgical... Operations, you can use it to wipe their head off. I'm just teasing. 
But I like bandanas too because you can cut them into strips because when your band-aid supplies run out, mm -hmm. you're going to need some type of cloth that you can just tie up over your cuts and abrasions and stuff. Clothes are going to be important. I mean, and you can you, yeah, cut you don't want to start clothing well, if you, you needed to. Yeah, but I'd rather keep my clothes yeah, intact, exactly. so we do bandanas. Quick clot. This is a quick clot pad. A lot of people don't know that this is a quick clot pad. Now, if you do apply one of these, you are going to have to scrub it out. Because once you apply this stuff, this is the bandage. Uh, once you apply this this to uh, something major, right? You're going to have to scrub it out once you're done. All right? It will not scrub, scrub, but you're going to have to clean out the quick clot. You can't leave it in there if you're going to stitch them up. Yeah, because your body is going to need to be able to repair itself. And if you have clotting factors that are permanently in your body, you're not going to get your blood flow and your tissue uh, perfusion back together. So that's why you got to make sure you get that out. Now, one thing that I like to carry in a kit like this, if I know I'm going to be dealing with the zombie apocalypse, I'm, I could deal with a fire. I could deal with many things. These are just a uh, burn sleeves or injury sleeves. It is in the event you wrap somebody up, right? You get somebody wrapped up, they could just have an injury, right? And you need to protect the fresh galls and wrap you've put over it. This just goes over, they just slide their hand in there and then slide it over wherever you've applied, say they've applied it here. This just goes over and it keeps that covered. If you're messing around in the woods, trying to hike, you know, get away from Sasquatch, you've got this covering up your freshly wrapped injury. I just packed these in there. Also, you could use them for other things. There's many things you could use these for. But I keep different sizes wrapped up like that. And that goes with my Coflex. You want to talk about Coflex? It's Coflex. It's awesome. It's awesome. It. Uh, no tape required for it to stick. So it'll go. stick to itself without ripping the skin. And um, this is so you can make a sling. Triangular bandage. Triangular bandage. So you can make a sling. You break an arm. You need to sling them up. We gave a class on this. Mm -hmm. Sippy did, actually. She gave a class on this. There's a video on it. Immobilizations. But immobilizations video, which not a lot of people wanted to watch because nobody cares about staying alive. So, but we're being sarcastic. I'm going to move on. You, Triangular bandage. You will want to know these things when it happens <laughs> to you. Definitely. But anyways. Moving on. If you run into us on the road and you need our help, but you didn't, you said you didn't watch my video, I'm not helping you. I'm just kidding. I'll help you. Anyways, triangle advantage. <laughs> there we go. Mouse shield. In case I run into some nasty hobo like myself. <laughs> Did I say that? Was that jacked up? Was I supposed to say hobo? <laughs> no, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Anyways, in case I run into somebody and I don't want my mouth touching their mouth, you know, I'd for some cases, I I kind of think about it. I don't want my mouth touching another person's mouth. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's just... People itch their butts and all sorts of places, and, and then they rub their fingers on their mouths. And then, and then they got, smell their fingers. Then you got vomit and blood coming out of their mouths, <laughs> like when you're doing chest compressions, or if you don't do it right, and you're pushing on their abdomen. Then they barf. Yeah. Anyway... A mouth it's it's a face shield for your for your mouth okay your mouth. for the, it goes on them just so you know it's not to tape anybody's mouth shut okay you don't put this on your mouth and then you put it on their mouth you apply it to their mouth anyways it's important to have this is just another bandage i forgot to throw in there with the bandages there we go uh compression uh compress abdominal Ab abdominal pad it's abdominal pad these are very important. Why? Because people bleed a lot from abdominal areas, but if you hit the artery there, you're going to die anyway. In so, probably two minutes. Yeah. So let's just hope you don't hit your aorta in your abdomen. <laughs> you know, there's people out there It's like, it's okay, you just got shot in the belly. Um, dude, <laughs> that's where his artery is. He's mm -hmm. going to die. All right, there's just a three three inch compress. I'm, I'm packing a lot of galls in here. And this is, I think it's another abdominal. Yeah, that's another abdominal. Yeah. Okay, that's an 8-inch. And a bunch of different galls. A bunch of different size galls. Now, galls pads come in handy. It's better this than a tampon, okay? I'm saying that because you can cause more infection with a tampon than just using galls. 
just throw the galls in your kit. You don't need to go cheap and just, you know, get a freaking set of galls. Different sizes of galls. It's much yeah. better than a tampon. Tampons are very limiting because you can only use it for uh, big punctures or gunshots. But, I mean, if you want to do it, go for it. But gauze is just more universal. And in some cases, when you wrap stuff up, you can use this. What is this called again? Do you remember? Ace wrap. Ace wrap. You can use the ace wrap in most situations, but um, it's just kind of annoying. It's not the best. Coflex is way better in most situations, but... But ace wrap will last longer. Yeah. You can wash it and just keep reusing it until it falls apart. More long term. So, it's always good to have both, okay? And then this is just a, another wrap. This is great when you're applying stuff to people's arms, limbs. Their fingers. Fingers. There you go. It's a wrap, right? Yeah, it's a smaller wrap. Okay. And here's a bigger one. There's a bigger one. And then I have another. And there's a mega. So I have three different sizes there for three different type of applications. It's good to have those, right? Now, here is your... Uh, what's this Combine one? Combine pad? Yeah, this one's huge. Uh, it's just... Large a, lacerations yeah. and things like that. And all sorts of stuff you can use yep. it for. Uh, more galls and this is an Israeli bandage which also is you could use it for um, hemor it's hemorrhage control but it, you could also use it as a tourniquet because it actually has these stretch out and it works just like that if you rip one of these open you'll see what I'm talking about Israeli bandage get one it's in every IFAC in the military just so you know and I think there's actually an NSN right there and part number there we go yeah. First thing that I come to in my kit when I put one of these together, it's my gloves. Now, you don't have to have nitrile gloves, but my gloves are first, and I always keep my face mask right there. PPE, people. I keep a set of masks set. for people around me, not just myself, but for other people, and set of gloves, All right? And... These. He's more of a pad man. These are pads. And the reason why I keep these is fire tender. It works as a fire tender. Trust me, it's way more of it. Also, in situations, what if I run out of all this? What if woman products, man? Woman products. Someone might actually need that. You know, you might have a female that needs this, right? You'd be like, take it. But I always throw it in my kit, right? Why? I just said why. But it all goes in here. Everybody's wondering, hey, where does it all go? It all goes in here. Now, I organize this. Hygiene is blue. Okay. Hygiene is blue. All my hygiene goes right here. Medical all goes right here. Basically, uh, pads, bandages, all that stuff. Over, over to one side is one Which side is where I put my tools so that I can get to them. And then the other side... I keep the flashlight right dead center, so when I open this up, bright orange, bright orange, rip it up, flashlight and my gloves and everything else is right there. But all of this goes all together in this, in a kit, and tucks away in my bag. And if I ever need it, it's right there, and I can remove it from my kit and just leave it sitting out or clip it to somebody's head or I could wear it like a fanny pack right here in the front you are the Bob Ross there we go happy little pack with happy little gauze happy little kits it's, it's happy Everything's, everything's gotta happy. be happy that's pretty much it yeah I think that sums it up Shazam Shazam okay that's it you're watching SOS I am Staff Sergeant Badass. Sippy Cup. Take it easy.